Ta-da! Super grand entrance. All right, nice to see that some of you have stayed. Got to excuse myself. Lang English is not my native, native language, uh, and I will blame the Swedish school system for all my faults today. But I will do my best to keep you awake. So I have the longest title of my presentation today, using data analytics to tell stories that have impact in real life. Super simple. Let's get started. I have to introduce myself. My name is Johan Johansson. I work at Outfox and some numbers about me, because you people like numbers. Uh, the last three years, I have be, have the show, uh, privilege to work with over 100 different clients in all verticals with different challenges. So I've seen it all, almost, or some of it, at least. I have spent 5,500 hours in just this field the last three years. Some of you may have been, done, uh, been doing more, but that's me, at least. And I have spent 400 hours as a trainer, mainly helping people understand numbers and using a product called Google Analytics. Some of you guys might know it. All righty then. So that's me. And this is what I'm going to talk to you about for the next 30 minutes. I have like 40 slides, so it's going to move fast. So keep alive now. Uh, I have three real world examples. Ta da! I have three tips. So you can just relax. You wanted tips. There is tips to help you on the way. You don't need to go to the courses. Just, just listen to those three tips. <laughs> and as I said, we have 30 minutes. So let's start. We all live in this world, don't we? Like this super sexy world of big data, cloud developers, internet of things, magic, and you know, everything that keeps us going up to the mo uh, waking up in the morning and going to our jobs. This is a wonderful, uh, wonderful space to be in right now. It's happening a lot of things. And the strange thing is that people don't tend to be super excited about it. How many of you have seen Friends? You know the TV series? You know Chandler? Nobody knows what he does for a living, but you guys do what he does. And I told my girlfriend yesterday that I had been interviewed in a pod that was 18 minutes long, me and just another guy talking about digital analytics. And I said, have you listened to it? Because she shared it on Facebook. She was like, mm, 18 minutes of you talking about that stuff, it's, it's not super sexy, you know? And we need to realize that people don't think this is super sexy. This is an, this is an export. Uh, from BigQuery, one of Google's uh, cloud products, super fancy product. You can do super exciting things. People don't see this as super sexy. So what I'm going to try to help you with is to convince people that this is actually kind of interested. And that's what I'm going to try to do now for the next 30 minutes. So I will start with my first example. I'm already needing some of this. Sorry. Building a bit of like, like super excitingness. All right, first example. What is this? Is a data point. So we have nothing happening over here, and we have something happening over there. You have no idea what it is, do you? And yet you send these kind of reports to people every day, just loads and loads of data, saying this is super exciting. And actually, this is super exciting. This is data from one of Sweden's biggest websites. And it's the first occurrence of a thing that would change this digital space. But you have no idea. Why? Because you have no context. So context now most commonly refers to environment or setting in which something exists. And we need that. So if I give you some context to that little data point that we have there and see if I can make it, make it a bit more interesting. It was 10 years ago. The screen size was 320 to 396. And we had uh, this session that we looked at was from Tabby, apparently a place called Nasbidal. Didn't know that that existed. Anybody lives there? No, anybody lives in Tabby? Didn't know that existed. <laughs> but cool for you. 
Apparently, it looks like this-ish. So what can that be? What was that? When I gave you that context, 10 years ago, when are we? Come on, you're analysts. 2007, yeah. Something happened, something visited a website that had that screen size. Yeah, it was the first smartphone session from Tabby around 2030 something on the 4th of November 2007. When you give context to data, it helps people. So my first tips to you is that analysts can provide context to data. Context helps smart people, because your colleagues are smart people, to understand what and why something has happened. Adding context also reduces the risk for misinterpretation. But we, we as analysts tend to not spend enough time adding context to numbers that we send out. Not you guys, you do it all of the time. I'm talking about other analysts, not in this room. <laughs> One of the tricks that I have learned is to use smart frameworks. This is a super smart framework for adding context to data to help people not misinterpret the data and to get them excited. And this uh, framework is called over-the-counter data. It's may, uh, it's developed by a, a fabulous woman called Jenny Rankins. You can watch her TED talk later. And actually, it's a framework for what is important to think about when you're presenting data to people. And it's super helpful tips. It's like, how do you add, what kind of text do you have in the footer, in the bottom? How should, what kind of graphs should you avoid? And if you use such and such graphs, what is the, tricky parts that you need to be aware of. So when you get back tomorrow, please just Google that one. So that's your first tips right there. Yeah, good, good. She's taking notes, so you don't have to. You can just ask her later. Then. She says this, because we needed to have tips, but we also needed to have data behind it. So she did a study about using this framework. And it turns out that the ov overall, when you added the over-the-counter data support, uh, and when it uh, companion data reports viewed um, by study participants, educator analysis of display data were 264 more accurate, percent more accurate. So you want that, right? You want people to understand the data you, you're sending out. Use a smart framework like this to help you guys improve um, your communication skills. Because you work with smart people, but data is super unsexy. And it's super hard to understand if you don't get the right context. So are you with me on the first one? Yeah, fine. I move on then. Second example. How am I doing in time-wise? I'm moving quite fast, so that's good. I always I get time for this. Building suspense. Important in good storytelling. Second example. This is a true story. This was me. I was going out to clients and say, because of this that I have seen in the data, you should do this. And they were like, Right? So, but I was like, see you next year. Just do the things I told you, and I see you next year, and everything will be better. So time went on, and I came back, and I said, you didn't do the things I told you. You, will, you never had that problem? Me as an analyst, I have that sometimes. You know, you go into a meeting, you present a couple of numbers, and you say, you need to a act on this and this. It's super important. And they'd be like, yeah, mm, yeah, we're going to think about it. So I came back, they didn't know nothing at all, and I was like, hmm, <sighs> awkward silence. And they were like, so what, just give me more insights. We know that some of the things you said are the smart thing to do, but hmm, just give us more smart things to do. But you didn't do, just, shh, shh, shh. just give me more smart things to do. You're an analyst. So I thought I have to go to, I, I stumbled across this, one of the great thinkers of our time. He said this, because this was happening all of the time to me. 
I was seeing a pattern. And he said, there's an old saying in Tennessee. I don't know in Texas, probably Tennessee. He's nailing it down, giving some context. <laughs> that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. Yeah, you didn't act. But the next time, because this happened a lot to me, fool me, uh, I can't get fooled again. So I have to improve something. At, uh, that would have, uh, at least what I thought is like the, the meaning behind it. So I thought this was my, this was my uh, workflow. This was the method that I used. I chose some nice graphs with a lot of context to prove that I was right. Then I tell them something like, your ad don't match your landing page. You need to improve. And then I was like, see you next year. And I went away. That's the privilege of being an analyst. You know, We have all the great answers, but we don't have to account for anything. So. But this wasn't working, because I was in the business of improving stuff. I wanted to change stuff. So they actually told me what was the problem. I didn't tell them why they should care. They were like, so what? So that got me thinking. As an analyst, you can and should provide the answer to the question, so what? Or help them at least to care about the problem that you have seen. Because you spend hours uh, thinking about this problem. You have drawn out the data and you found that this is a big issue. And then you present it in like two seconds and it's like, this is super important. And they're like, yeah, but we don't have tea like the English breakfast that I use. And that's a real problem. And you were like, what? So I thought, I thought I need to change the method that I approached them with. So I did this instead. I started with telling them something like, your ad don't match your landing page. They could get a he head around that. And then I tried to answer the so what, or actually why they should care. Why is this a problem? And then I broke it down. What needs to be done and by who and when. And as all analysts, you are super excited if you can use data in the so what part. So I tried to do it like this. If we do x and y and c, your cost per acquisition will go down by this. That's why this is important. So right now, you are losing money. So you can put it like this instead. Right now, you are paying x, y too much for every new customer. If we phone up the agency and tell them, change the ad to match the landing page, we predict that we are going to see a reduction in cost for you acquiring a new clients. You're like, damn, I have to do more data miming stuff, predicting-ish. But you guys like that. So this would be a problem for you. So my idea was this then. My sherry on top framework, if you like to call it that, was that I have to tell them this. In my presentations, in my PDFs that I send out, I need them to tell them what have I seen, why they should care, what they should do next, when and how they should do the changes that they need to do, and how do we follow up on this to see if they have been improving. So you get the idea here? This can be the last slide of your presentation, or this can be the way that you set up a whole presentation that you do. It has helped me to communicate better with my clients and to make it easier for them to understand why they should care and what they should do. Make sense? Whew. It's the first time I presented this outside, so I was like... <laughs> My sherry on top framework. It's super sexy. Use it, abuse it. All right. Whew. So let's move on to the last one. Time? Moving super fast. But I don't know really when I started. Does someone know? <laughs> I'm just looking at the metric, and it's like, hmm, looks good. <laughs> no, seems to be within the frame, at least. Someone maybe can tell me if I'm going over time. Who? Hmm? All right, last example. Uh, 
this is actually my mentor, Stefan, Stefan Hamel, a super nice guy. If you haven't met him, at least Google his name and see some of the great stuff that he's been doing for the digital analysts of the world. He recently released a manifesto called Radical Analytics, in which he stated that analysts are change agents. They have the privilege of recommendation. And I couldn't agree more. Why I became an analyst was because I wanted to change things. I wanted to improve upon the real world. But now I'm stuck in this digital marketing world. But you know, you get my idea. That was I was trying. You aim for the moon and you get almost you get to San Francisco maybe. So that fits quite good what what I think an analyst, like the goal or the, the value that I try to uh, work for is to drive change. Uh, and driving change, uh, to help drive change, storytelling can be super uh, useful. Uh, this is uh, quotes from uh, Jennifer L. L. Aker. Uh, she's a professor in marketing at Stanford University. And she said that stories helps data become more memorable. <laughs> stories help to create greater impact and stories helps listeners to connect on a more personal level. And this ringed with me because that's what I want to do as an analyst. I want to change things. And she said stories can help you change things. And stories can even improve data. It can help people remember them because they are super boring from the beginning. <laughs> and it can help you create greater impact. So my last example that I want to share with you is an example of how a story uh, really affected all of Sweden. And the power that lies within just a simple story. So. Here we have some data again. You recognize that guy? Super confused. What do we have here? We have revenue for a nonprofit organization. Starting from 2014 to 2017. And you can see a spike there in September 2015. Something happened that made their revenue go up way above what was expected and even way above everything else that has happened in the past, what is it, ish years here. And actually, because we work with quite a lot of clients, we could see the same change for three other nonprofit organizations, all happening on the same day. So what was this thing happening here? What was this thing impacting the revenue so much for nonprofit organizations? It has to do with this, the Syrian civil war. But some of you might say, it started like the Syrian war, it started back in 2011. So it wasn't the realization of that the Syrian war has started that was the story. Anybody has any idea what happened in September 2015? I think you all remember this story. We could see that day what was happening to three of the biggest NGOs in Sweden. And I think this story resonates with you. It cuts into the core of you. It passes every filter that you have and moves straight in here. And it makes you want to act. And this gives you context as well. It gives you the context of the cold water, the child lying there alone. This story had such a great impact. It all happened here. We woke up on September the 4th. And we saw this story, and by, two, uh, by September the 5th, it has gone down to a more regular level. But you see the rise there on September 4th. That is the revenue trends. So what did we see? For one of the nonprofit organizations, we saw this on this day, compared to a regular one. 
transactions was up 7,000%. We had revenue up for 14,000%, and the average order value was up 84%. This story made you act. This story had the power to make you act. And that shows the, s the impact that a story can have. Actually, this was bigger than Christmas. So the last thing here was this. By joining data and storytelling together, you speak to both emotion and logic. And you need that. You need to speak to the emotional side of us as well when you present data. Because that's the strongest thing. That's the hardest thing. And that's the thing that you need to address. We as analysts are super good at speaking at the logical side, but that is not the part where, where we as uh, people act or tend to act. We have known about what was happening in Syria. He wasn't the first kid to drown there, but that story resonated in such a way that we couldn't ignore it. And that, I think, shows you the power of just the picture and the story that is within that picture. So, there you had it. My three real-world examples, my three tips, and I think I was done in less than 30 minutes. I have no idea, but I think so, at least. All right, now you put your pen and paper in front of you, and I will give you the, like a summary here. So, okay, here it is. Always create context around your data. Help your people understand why they should care and what they should do next. And use data to show them why they should care. How much does it cost to not act on what you have just presented? How many more satisfied users can we get if we act on what you are proposing? That's a super strong argument that you can make. And last but not least, if you want your data to be memorable, have impact, and connect on a personal level, you will need to speak to both emotion and logic, at least when you're talking to humans. Machine learning and IE don't care that much about stories. But we as humans do, and I think that if there is something that I, ha that I have learned, is that just presenting numbers won't get you anywhere. You need to provoke a feeling as well when you present. So I'm done. Here are some links, and thanks. You can just ask me stuff on LinkedIn. That's the easiest way, because I don't use Twitter anymore. So sorry for that. All right, I think I did this faster than expected. So yay! Thank you so much.